everybody welcome back to my channel for today's video i'm going to be doing a bmt video basically a summary of bmt not my experience but what to expect what to like how to mentally prepare physically prepare basically what to expect when you're there and how to pass bmt for today's video i have a guest with me a special guest who was in my bmt with me and she's gonna help me with certain things because i don't remember as much as she do and yeah welcome the <laughs> Bradley Pitt. Hey, everybody. Yeah, me and her were best friends in BMT, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, fun fact, we did not speak at BMT. We hated each other in BMT, but now we're. But, like, it was, like, unspoken. Like, it was for no reason. Yeah, we looked at each other and we were like. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah, we basically said, oh, hell no. We're not fucking with each other. It she was, like, the morning that we were leaving was, like, the first time we actually talked. I was like, wait. Put on, you're. You're going to Keesler? No, I didn't. Like, we got Wait, <laughs> you're going? And then I was like, wait, what's your job? You were like, admin. I was like, me too, bro. When was this conversation? At like three in the morning when we had to leave. You don't remember anything. I don't remember anything, especially about her, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we're going to talk about the first week and the first night you get when you get to BMT. Yeah, it was kind of a blur, to be honest, because there was so much going on so fast, and it was like late. But basically what happened, we got in... And the first thing we do, we go into like a big briefing room and we sit, they group us with the people they know they're going to group us with and who are we going to sleep with at night and whatever. And it was like a little, it was a little eerie because when we first got there, it was like silent. It was so silent. No one wanted to talk. No one was yelling. No one wanted to talk. So when we were, so we were all sitting in a briefing room, it was like a bunch of us and there we're getting our, all our stuff, all our materials and then... We didn't eat dinner, so we ended up eating, uh, what is it called? A totem? It's like an MRE, I don't know if you got, but it's basically like a packaged Let's dinner. The basically, yeah, we ate a totem, disgusting, but I enjoyed it. I don't, I don't remember what happened. We couldn't heat it up, so we had to eat it cold, but- You if, like that? You enjoyed that? Take advantage of eating at the airport before you guys mm -hmm. come, because- Yes. And if they say, no, we got time, we're gonna eat in San Antonio. No, you're not. Well, I, why did they say that? They said you- yeah, spend your money in most likely you might stop at Dallas or whatever you want to stop at. Spend your money there and then eat there and bring snacks. So it's overnight. Right after we left there, we were there for hours. They took us. We literally just went into the dark with these strange stop. people. It was just all of us sitting on the floor in the middle of like nowhere, like a little on literally on concrete, just waiting there for like what is it, hour, forty minutes? You think it was that long? Yes. No way. It was like. 30 and yeah, we're grouped with the people we're going to be staying with. So you'll be grouped with the people you're sleeping with. So you look to your left and right, you're going to sleep with them for the next eight weeks, seven and a half weeks. We're sitting there waiting for our MTI, our instructor, to come get us. And when they come get y'all, what was it? What time was it? It was like, Two. it was probably midnight, midnight or like close to one. Yes, and we were just sitting there outside and... That's from the MTI. But well, it was us and then we had our <laughs> brother flight, which was like... The boys' mm -hmm. dorm, whatever. And their MTI came first. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the yelling began. So it starts right after you get grouped with your flight and your MTI comes. That's when and they you're start. you're sitting on the concrete in the dark. Mm -hmm. That's when B basically BMT begins. Because when you first get off the bus, it's not like a shark attack. They don't do like, yeah, they don't scream at you, basically. They were just kind of rude in the airport, but like that was whatever. Yeah, the airport you get a tiny bit. It's basically like meth, so... It's just like yeah. an attitude, but you know, just just take it. Don't take it personal. But it's cool though because the place that we were sitting waiting for our MTI to come get us was where the coin ceremony was. Yeah. Our so first it was like a full circle. It was kind of yeah. Cool. So we started there and we ended there. Yeah. <laughs> so she came and got us. She came and got us. <laughs> she, girl, she's like five three. The female MT MTIs are. Are the are they they're vicious? They're scarier. They're because vicious. I think they like. They want the respect. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. she comes. Who has my roster? So she said, "Get up, let's go." And she's just walk. She's just like sprint. Yo. She's just like walking while we're sprinting. That's the moment that I. You cried. No, I didn't know that I um. I was like, what am I doing? Why like why am I here? <laughs> Oh, we shit. were all out of breath. <laughs> yeah, and it was like we holding, we're holding our bag. So whatever you came with, you're holding it, and you will be holding it, leaving plus two extra bags. Yeah, 
a big two extra big bags so you'll hold that one leaving so be mindful of what you pack anyway so we're running it was like a half a mile probably yeah. half a mile that's she's pretty far now that like i know the area is that's pretty far it's kind of close but when we were Ooh. walking when we, not walking she was walking but somehow she was still faster than all of us jogging and you have to hold it in your right hand i think your left hand you have to hold your bag in your left hand you cannot <laughs> you be can't like, put it on you have you literally have to hold it yeah you have to hold it with your hand and it, you'll be yelled at so that's when all the screaming started and she's yelling like Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Why are you so slow? Why are you so slow? And then we were just like, oh, sh oh, shit. And then she took us to our room and continued to yell at us. And what else? What happened when we went to our room? I don't remember. I don't remember. I have no idea. Did we shower? We did shower. I think we showered. We did? Yeah. The very first night. I think so. And then I don't think we... We didn't go to bed until like three-ish. And then we had to get up at five. I think you do shower the first time. If you're going in the summer, you have to shower twice, mandatory. Like, no ends if or buts. You have to shower twice. They have to at least give mandatory you the Mandatory two showers a day and three meals a day. Breakfast, yeah. lunch, dinner. Night. That was zero Everything night. Everything was just so hectic at first, but the, also, like, boring. Cause it, it was... I remember wanting to cry slow. because I was so bored when we were... um Put your bags, like, on your locker or open your locker. You guys have 15 seconds. You have to count down simultaneously. Like... 15, 14, 13. And I remember doing that for the second time, and I'm like, oh, I can't do this for eight weeks. I, I like, stopped counting. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> if they don't see you counting, you're going to get yelled at. So just count. Just count. Don't be like her. At least move your, at least move your mouth. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I remember being so depressed. I just, and then. Really? I, I was so depressed because I was so bored. Oh, like, I, yeah. I wanted to do something. That's and then true. when we showered, I, that's, like, not to be very weird or anything, I felt so normal showering. That's when I felt I normal, and then I was like, I went right to sleep. That's because we had, I mean, we had to. We just, like, got thrown in there. So that's zero night, and zero week is basically the same way, but you're getting materials, you're learning, you have drill class, and you're just learning a lot. You're getting a lot of information thrown at you, but you're still getting yelled at and yelled at and yelled at and yelled at. And, like, it's bad because, like, you obviously don't know nothing, so you don't know better. But the main advice I'll give you guys is just listen. And just listen. Just do what you're told. And, and go to bed at night. <laughs> Please go to bed at night. Just, even if you don't want to go to sleep, just shut up. Be in your bed. Don't be running around up, laughing, talking. Your schedule is you, you're up at latest 545 every day, and you're in bed at 9 o'clock. Don't matter what time you wake up, you're in bed at 9 o'clock. 545 is like a blessing. 545, yeah, it's a blessing. It's like, it's a treat. Because sometimes you wake up at 5. The army people are like, y'all wake up at 5? What? I bet you they like that. They like, <laughs> cause they probably wake up at like four. I mean, like two or something. Probably, shit. yeah. So okay. it's a long, it's a long day. Sixteen hour days, fifteen hour days, every day. Okay, so now going into how we are separated and who we are with throughout the whole eight weeks. So obviously, like I said, zero night. You are sat with the girls, the, your dorm, who you'll be sleeping with for the rest of the rest of your time there. But flights, flights are your like group. Your group that you're gonna graduate with, who you're gonna march with, who you're gonna like. Do PT with, eat with, yeah. have, like everything. It's the, who you go to class with. Yeah. And now um, they just started integrating, so it'll be boys and girls, so you won't be with girls all the time. You'll be mixed with some boys, which is literally a blessing when you're living with girls all the time. It did, however, make our dorm, like, hate each other because yeah. we didn't know how to work together because we were never together during the day. We were only with each other morning and night. It, yeah, but you're, yeah. like, you, you, you're with your integrated flight, like, 24 7 besides when like obviously nighttime or cleaning or showering whatever in the squadron there's four stairwells alpha bravo charlie delta there's four dorms like four rooms in each stairwell so they'll get four of those people and make four different flights you know i don't know how to say it so there were three male dorm rooms in our stairwell one female dorm room in the stairwell in the stairwell and there's four we stairwells. were in bravo stairwell and then there's three other stairwells in the squadron area. But let's just focus on Bravo because that's what we were in. There were about 40 girls in our dorm. So, and four flights for our stair. This is like. It's hard. Okay. It's hard. There's, there's four flights for our stairwell. Our integrated flights that come from our stairwell. Okay, this is kind of confusing. So, right? so four, four rooms filled with 40 people, okay? 
Ten girls in one play, ten girls in another, ten girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're, yeah. they've separated, so you can be with different people from, so you won't only be with people you're staying with all day. You get to be with people from all your stairwell, but you're stuck with them. That's, that's your integrated fight. That's your fight for the rest of the weeks that you're there. And that's who you be with. So that's how they do it. Mm-hmm. You guys will understand when you get there. I can't really explain it, but if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you I don't. I understand it. Like, the, first, the zero week, I was kind of confused. They were like, what flight are you? And I was like... Oh no! Yeah, I don't know. I remember that. I remember not doing my play. I'm, like, I'm never gonna remember this. And then, Same. And then I remember it, it like the next day. Yeah. Once you're in your stairwell, you you're never gonna see the other stairwells. Like it's rare to see the other stairwells. You guys will be sitting under each other, but you guys won't really see each other until like graduation or like mm-hmm. PT. But you guys won't be able to interact with each other. PT was Monday through Saturday, unless there was a call. Yeah. So you get PT six days a week, every day. You wake up at either 5.45 or 5 if you have like a PT test or you have a run day or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mostly for a PT test, but you wake up at 5.45 and you have to be downstairs by 6. Okay, so you're you're downstairs by 6. You're literally on the PT pad. You're standing with your flight. What you do, you do the the creed, the Air Force creed and the Air Force song. You have to memorize those. Loud, oh. proud, and together. Another thing, you're giving a sheet. You're going to get a sheet to memorize. Oh hell no! That is your that's your what study work memory work memory work and you will study 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 nonstop until like the fifth week, fourth week. I never knew it. This is what this song? No, the the memory work. You're crazy. (laughs) They never asked us. So like if you're like sitting there like if they're if they're trying to figure out what we y'all what y'all doing next or they're like having a meeting or something, you'll study. If you're waiting in line to go to lunch, you're studying. If you're waiting in line to get some water or something, you're studying. You're they're gonna play pull out your memory work while we figure this out. Pull out your, they're gonna just you like actually have to. You have to study. And if you don't study, you fail. But anyways. And it don't don't be like, how do they know I'm studying? I could just be looking at it. You get tested. You're gonna you're you're gonna know and they're gonna randomly call you out for that. So But back to PT. You never work out on Saturdays. I'm on Sundays. You never work out the day before a PT test because they give you a break for your body to rest. Rest day. And then next on the PT day, on the PT test day, get right at it. Also, the PT test is like, I don't know what it is now because when we were there, it changed like four different times. So the standard, so you'll probably just have to figure out the standards when you get there. Just know you have to know, you have to run, you have to push ups and sit ups. I think that's the only three qualifications that you have to do. So what I, a piece of advice I would give you guys is actually push yourself during PT. You'll improve a lot if you push yourself. Yeah, like don't half ass, don't half ass PT because it's gonna be hard for you to test and you're gonna get right back and you're gonna be there for ten weeks. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the lunch, the chow hall. They call it chow hall. And wait for and what was your favorite meal? Mine was breakfast. Breakfast, breakfast all the way. Um, yes, French toast day. You were a pancake day. I was. Wait. Oh. Yeah, I think I was pancake because we were like, <laughs> so every other day it it's either it'll it'll be pancake with hash browns and then it'll be French toast pancake French toast pancake like back to back every day, same yes. thing. But it it just it just don't get old. I don't know. It was so good. It did not get old. It was really good. So three meals a day. You go with your flight. So your integrated flight, well, boys and girls. You obviously march to Chow and you're waiting outside, and there's this thing called Chow Runner. <laughs> Were you ever chow runner? <laughs> yeah, once. Once? Yeah. What it was the... during. It was on a weekend when I was picked me to be chow runner. Oh my god, you needed to be. I remember. I think I did. Because <laughs> you. you never was in, and we were like trying to figure out who never did it before. So that's one of the. You know, a lot of people. Yeah, and I had a list. Anyways, so there's a special job called chow runner. I recommend doing it before, at least one time before you like leave. But I you... practiced it. Yeah, no one wants that job because that's basically you're asking to get chewed up. Like, chewed up means when they're yelling at you. Basically, you go in, <laughs> you two people go into the chow hall and they report to all the sergeants. Like, there's a big table. It's called a snake pit, right? Mm-hmm. Snake pit. So, it's like 10 sergeants. You go to the snake pit and it's in the middle of the chow hall. So, like, everyone in there is just, like... Either watching you or, or just listening. To so you have to like report like a certain way. You have to march a certain way. Ah, pivot. Ah, yeah. right. Look up. You do your little, your little duck walk. You have to like all, if you mess up, 
You're, you're gonna scream at Okay, but I messed up. I got lucky and he just laughed at me. But Yeah, oh. It's cause it's cause my mess up was so embarrassing that he like, no. didn't even yell at me about it. But zero week is the worst because they know you don't know anything, but they're still gonna yell at you. They're gonna yell at you while teaching you so you won't mess up ever again type stuff. So I recommend you do it like the fourth week or some shit. But also, I think that's about when I, I was. It was either the fourth or the fifth week that I did it. Yeah, but if you mess up in the fourth and fifth week, then they're gonna yell at you because you're supposed to know better. So either way, you're gonna get yelled at unless they're in a good mood. Or you do it right. Yeah, if you do it perfect, just do it right. They'll compliment you and I'm like, do never say sorry. <laughs> never say sorry. They're just gonna be like, don't say sorry, do better. So just. But not like that nice. They're gonna yell at you. Oh, yeah. So mentally prepare yourself to be yelled at every single day. But, okay, so back to the child and the procedure. You have, there's this thing called a reporting statement, and you have to, like, report, you have to say this before you talk to any sergeant, unless it's, like, a yes or no question. But you have to say your reporting statement. Um, sergeant, like, trainee, blah, 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 your last name, reports as ordered. Reports as ordered. Oh, not reporting as ordered. Reports as not ordered. And then you have to make sure you say sorry. It's like you have to say a certain thing, and if you mess up, they're gonna be like, "What the fuck did you just say?" Like they're gonna yell at you. Yeah. Anybody do it again? Go back around, take a lap, do something. And it's not like it's not just one person yelling at you. They're all yelling at you. And if you call a sergeant a captain, or a captain a sergeant, that one's worse. Just go lay down. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you go home. Go home. Go like home. just drop out. So right, you do your reporting statement and. You're going to have to learn a lot of stuff to memorize. It becomes real easy, but you have to memorize. Then you have to go back out. You have to do that twice, like reporting to the, all the sergeants and stuff. You have to go back and bring your people in, and you have to see them a certain way. It's going to be hard. I'm just, I, there's, not, there's nothing I can do here to teach you You'll guys. understand, like, when you get there. And obviously, sometimes they know it's your first time because, like, they, they know your face. Like, if there's chow runners that were chow runners every single day the whole time and if they kept messing up like yeah they were the ones getting chewed out yeah sometimes they try to be like okay i know you don't know so they'll try to help you yeah and like and remember the first week so if you're chow running the first week god bless you because you didn't learn any movement and you have to know those movements before you go in and if it's the first day you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get yelled at. And they know you didn't they, you didn't get taught, but you're still going to get yelled at. Also, last thing about eating before you sit down oh you can't look you can't talk you gotta keep only look at your food you can't talk um basically you just you'll get in trouble for that i did and before you sit down you have to <laughs> okay so you have to stand at attention for three seconds and after three seconds you go at ease and then you can sit down if you do not do those three seconds before every meal and if they catch you getting chewed out yeah, you're getting in trouble. Like, I mean, if you, like, get yelled at... It's not the it's, worst. It's whatever. I just... My mindset was, like, this is the... Like, that's their job. Yeah, it's, And then they go home, and they're, like, having dinner with their family. Like, they're normal people. Yeah, and if you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, they're not that bad. Yeah, and after after a couple weeks... They open up. They <laughs> open up. I don't know. Unless we just got lucky. I really don't know. Yeah, I think we got lucky, but then I heard a lot of people who like their sergeants. That's true. Yeah. Like on different stairwells. So I think it's a time. Okay. Lastly for child, this is last thing for child. You'll easily learn how to walk a certain way. You cannot double you cannot walk back. You cannot cut through tables. If you think the easiest way is just like going here, no, you have to go here. You can't just like cut. You have to go around. You cannot it, one way traffic. One way yeah. traffic. The whole they'll time. explain it to you. Yeah. I but think. they'll explain it to you after you got chewed out seven times. Right. They expect you to know. They expect you to know the layout head to back the first day so it's so, how to pass it's uh, really not that hard yeah how to pass it's not that hard to graduate vmt honestly if you don't run away if you don't do no stupid stuff the biggest um thing that people don't pass for is the fitness test yes that's like the biggest thing so that's why we said earlier push yourself because it actually it helps Yes. You'll improve a lot. Mm -hmm. And run days actually run because you, like, believe it or not, we got like four run days. Not even. Probably like four run days. Not a lot of run days, but we did um, like stationary cardio. So you have to pass so your tough. PT test as a mandatory thing. You can't fail that. Another test you have to pass is called the EOC, the end of course test. You have to at least get a 70 or above. If you don't, you can get recycled. And recycled it means like you got an extra two weeks you in BMT. You just get washed back two weeks. So you'll be put in a different squadron. And you'll graduate two weeks later. 
So, but everything you learn in class will be on the end of course test and you have to get a 70 or above, if not. You'll either get the book or um, iPads. Okay, so the fifth week is literally all PCs, which is progress checks, which is all stuff you have to pass in order to graduate. What was like the first one we had? The first PC? Mm -hmm. Um, was it like taking your gun apart? Oh yeah, probably. We had to take our gun apart. It wasn't even timed. You're not timed. Just make sure. You're you... gonna be. Yeah, it's so easy. It's not... Like it's so, like honestly, it's super easy to pass. So that. taking that apart and putting it back together—that's one. Um, um, and then the T triple C. With T triple C is basically metal medical how to um put on put a tourniquet on how to fill it with gauze and like clean up basically blood proper procedures. How yeah. to talk to someone who's in a traumatic state. Yeah, like basically how to save someone's life at the very basic level. Dress and appearance, you get tested on how you look, how you wear in your uniform. Basically all that stuff. You get tested on how you wear in your blues and your OCPs. But they tell you exactly like how to look. The jet, they will. It's so... Because at that point, they're like pretty chill. Yeah, it's fifth week. They want you to pass. They're they want you out of here. They're over it too. It's not like they don't have acid, but they help you like so much. Like they're gonna yeah. tell you, your shirt is like you got a string right here. Clip that, or you're gonna fail. Like that stuff. Wear a uniform, right? No strings, no dust, no dirt, no lint, nothing. No fingerprints on your belt mark, nothing. Oh, the um, your little like area in the dorm. They'll check. Oh, yeah, they'll that's check another your test. wall locker and the area around your bed, your shoes, just so like. Make sure cleanliness. Yeah, your inspection. You have to pass your. And they'll show you how to fold all the issued clothes that you get, because they're folded and rolled and whatever and <laughs> hung in certain ways, very particular. Yes. Another test is what? Uh, we did C burn. C burn. That's where you um learn how to put your mop gear on. Mop gear, which is like a gas mask, all your gear that just in case you like it's like a gas infection or whatever. Don't go in the winter. <laughs> That's horrible. I mean, the sun in the summer, it's summer. Oh, it was so horrible. bad. It was horrible in the summer. It was so, so bad. if you're going in the summer, good luck. You're gonna be sweating and you're gonna be claustrophobic. I, I had a panic attack. Yeah, I did. they um yeah, my friend that was next to me had to figure out how to take it all off, because I mean, with the mask on and the hood over it, like tightened. You have to wear it a certain way. Mm -mm. I want to see if I can insert a picture right here. <laughs> anyway, so you have to wear it a certain way, and they'll like, they'll be like, you're waiting in a line, and they'll be like, okay, that's correct, cool, correct, right. And they literally, they want to help you so bad, they'll be like, no, something's wrong, go figure it out, come back. They don't want to fail you, they'll be like, go figure it out, come back. You and come then, back, and then you pass if you got it right. The next one is. Um, Catam. Catam. That's where you actually shoot your weapon for the you first time. You have to time. hit the target like 12 times. 12 out of 24 times. But I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, so many people did not even make 12, but they just count it. Because they... Really? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you're shooting your weapon. You have to make 12 or more in order to qualify. At least 12 out of the 24. Yeah, so that's pretty simple. Honestly, just look. Just look. Okay, so Bradley had to go somewhere, so I'm gonna be finishing the last part of the video. But last part I really want to talk about is the certain jobs you can get in BMT, like what you have to do, and, and I'm gonna explain what details are. Okay, so I'm gonna start with details. Details are basically cleaning; they're chores. You get assigned certain jobs in the beginning, the first day, because you have to clean every day, like twice a day, sometimes even more. But it's usually in the morning and night. There's bathroom crew, there's laundry crew, there's hallway crew, there's bed aligners, shoe aligners, um, day room crew, which is like the little day room. I'm in a day room actually right now. It's basically like a little hangout room type stuff. In BMT, there's no toys, there's no games. It's literally just a room where you basically just get briefed and stuff. So a lot of different jobs. Um, basically, whatever, like I said, like bathroom crew, you're cleaning the bathroom. Um, laundry crew, you're doing everyone's laundry, you're passing them out. Sometimes people can help pass them out. Like usually, that's, if you want to be more efficient, everyone should come together and help pass out laundry. But laundry crew is only a certain amount. Of pe only a certain amount of people allowed in the laundry room. They will wash your clothes and they'll just separate them and pass them out to you. Hallway crew, you're cleaning, you're sweeping the floor, you're going outside your actual dorm and cleaning the hallway and the stairs and stuff. Bed aligning, you're aligning the beds. If the beds are not aligned, you can fail. 
you get up every day you have to pass your room you don't have to but you have to on the wall there's gonna be like a checklist of stuff and then your mtl when you're gone they'll walk around and be like whatever past this fill this had dust on the floor uh hair a string of hair on the toilet or some shit like that that'll be hung up like on your wall so usually we'll go and walk in and we'll be like oh we failed today like we have to do better type stuff and they'll tell you what you failed on what you can do better but it's up to you in order to pass that you have to pass it like the more you pass the more they're gonna trust you the more they're gonna like you know make basically like mess with you like they're gonna think like oh they can follow rules they can they can do what they they're told and not like have a problem so maybe we'll be more lenient with them maybe we'll give them extra phone call time and stuff like that so you want to pass so and then there's also a little thing called what's it called <laughs> oh is it something called ec this is a job that we'll all get i unfortunately had to be stuck with the ec monitor like to be being the ec monitor where i had to make the schedule of people who work in ec ec is two hour shifts so from when you wake up to when you like 24 hours ec two people had to be at the door guarding the door monitor who comes in answer in the intercom you have to answer it a certain way there's a script so you don't have to memorize anything there's a script but you know the first day you're like ec like you're like trying to read it because you're nervous because there's someone like a sergeant talking to you you have to open the door and you have to go by procedures there's another script and they be like they would like, like to enter dormitory you be like may i see your authority to enter and they'll be like and if sergeants they will play with you they'll be like no you can't see my authority to enter and then you're like I would say like, oh, a sergeant is telling me, no, I'm not going to tell them like, you can't come in. But you have to be like, no, you can't come in. You're not coming in here. You have to go by, it's like a rule set. So you'd be like, he'll be like, no, I'm not seeing your authority in there. I'm like, okay, may I refer you to CQ, which is like the front desk. I mean, I refer you to them because you're not coming in here without showing me your authority to enter. Because what if you like, you know, this is like basically preparing you for like how to guard the door and how to protect your flight, how to protect your dorm, like making sure no random people come in. So those are the procedures and they will, they will trick you and they will try to come in your room and you just have to follow, like you have to know what to do. But everything is on the wall, so all you have to do is read it. Also, when a opposite gender come into the dormitory, you have to say females enter the dormitory or gentlemen enter the dormitory and everyone who's in there will repeat it back to you. You have to say it and if you don't you're gonna get yelled at probably get told to do push-ups or something so yeah but you're only on that shift two hours a day but it's 24 hour shift so two people have to be there all, every day there's like four to six six to eight ten to twelve so on so on even like late at night and you'll sleep in the people who's before who the people who's on the shift before you they'll wake you up so you'll be woken up at night and be like, hey it's time for your shift you'll know ahead of time if your ec monitor is good enough like the schedule should be done before you go to sleep so you cannot go to sleep and then be like oh they waking me up out of my sleep i didn't know how to I, I didn't know how to work at four in the morning or three in the morning but if you're an ec monitor i recommend you get a schedule and you monitor people who work at night usually there'll be one ec monitor the whole time and the job you get you can't just quit the mtls would, the mtis would not let you quit if you try to quit they be like, oh you're trying to quit the military so you want to leave so you're not you're not ready for this so you can't quit like you just you just can't quit they won't let you you can be fired, but they won't fire you because they want you to learn. Yeah, but EC, it's just two hour shifts. You'll eventually work every hour. Like you'll work four in the morning, you'll work 10 in the morning, but you have to be on guard. You have to make sure you have to monitor and you have to stand. You can't sit, you have you can't sit, you can't eat, um, you can't sleep, obviously. People, I know someone who fell asleep on EC and they got held back for two weeks. So yeah, you'll learn all these rules in BMT. This is just like a little quick like synopsis. Yeah, I think that's basically all I have for right now. So I'm gonna end this video here because I'm pretty sure I covered up the gist of it and like what you have to know. So I'm just gonna end it here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video was very like informative for you guys. If you guys have any additional questions, leave it down below. I will respond. Like I love responding to comments. Just ask me any additional question. If something you want to know, I can just answer in a comment. I'll pin it for anyone else who wants to know. I also have my social media linked down below. So if you guys need to like DM me, ask me questions. I've been DMing a couple people about 
DMT question. So this is like an official video. I hope this sums up a lot of the questions that I've been getting my DM. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment down below. Also, subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. And if you are thinking about joining the army, any just like any advice, I can also make it a video just based off advice. I can make a video by based off solely my experience. You guys want to know my experience on how to handle certain things. If you guys need me to go into more detail about something I talked about and I didn't go into more detail, or if something you just don't understand, just ask it down below. And yeah. So once again, thank you for watching. And if you have any other video ideas or anything else you want to know, just leave it down below and I'll get to them and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.